ओम शांति इलेवेंथ मे 2019 सैटरडे टुडे स्लोगन कंटेंटमेंट इज अ वेरी ग्रेट वर्च्यू दो जूरी मेन कॉन्स्टेंटली कंटेंट आर लव बाय गॉड लव बाय पीपल एंड लव बाय दिस सेल्फ कंटेंटमेंट इज अ ग्रेट वर्च्यू दो जूरी मेन कॉन्स्टेंटली कंटेंट आर लव बाय गॉड loved by people and loved by the self of all the virtues contentment is the only virtue for which baba has used the word jewel jewel of contentment even for purity he has not used the word jewel it's only for contentment that baba has used the word jewel santosht mani so baba is saying contentment is a very great virtue and if one remains content then automatically is loved by god is loved by the world and is loved by himself self so you get god's love when you remain content you get love of people when you remain content and you yourself start loving yourself when you remain content so contentment is one of the most important virtues and three things are necessary for contentment or you can say that there are three pillars of contentment a person only the person who has who is full can remain content who is full of attainments treasures fortune unless and until one is full with fortune attainment and treasure one cannot remain content in the worldly life also a beggar is always dissatisfied when i say beggar it doesn't mean just the money or thing but any person who is lacking in particular thing remains dissatisfied in the moment person becomes full there comes contentment so if there is a dissatisfaction in life the reason is lack of something that could be inner happiness peace purity or anything unless and until we are full we cannot remain truly contented so the treatment for contentment is to fulfill the deficiency is to identify the deficiency know the level of deficiency mild moderate severe and treatment consist of filling replacement of that particular thing so when we remain full we remain content when there is a deficiency within of anything we often are restless illities the second thing is desires the more the desires worldly desires mundane desires the more we remain dissatisfied so discontentment comes as a direct result of increasing desires even in the spiritual life there can be so many desires of the worldly nature it is quite pathetic to see that persons who are advancing spiritually are developing petty desires for worldly name and fame or getting trapped in some of the facilities or getting trapped in 
bodily desires after having made a significant progress in spirituality after having reached very top level of spirituality one gets attached to some person after having spent so many years in spirituality two persons develop a very strong attachment to each other and that attachment is not spiritual that attachment has got physical overtones that attachment has got physical element so after having been in gyan for a very long time when such a such an spiritual accident happens the wounds are very deep the bruises the scratches the abrasions on the spiritual life take time to heal so this happens because of some deep rooted impurity this happens because of the illusion that we are totally established in purity this happens because of the ego that says that you have attained a very high level of purity that happens because of this subtle ego and that also happens because of suppressed desire which remained unaddressed for a very long period of time a person is in love with somebody a is in love with b in their youth and suddenly a receives baba's knowledge and suddenly he realizes the futility of all the worldly love and suddenly he realizes how wasteful is marriage and suddenly he realizes the uselessness of the sensual pleasure and he gives up everything and enters the path of knowledge spent significant time maybe 40 years and in this 40 years he has seen many ups and downs he has seen the worst behavior of gyanis and during those phases of low mood the la past suppressed desire might come up again for a short while and it will make him fall down and then maybe within few hours the person might recover but the damage is done so unfulfilled desires suppressed desires ego that we have become pure this thing sometimes leads to fall so one has to be ever vigilant the moment one becomes proud of purity the fall starts the moment one feels that we our brahmacharya or our purity is very strong uh, immediately maya attacks that's why brahmacharya is a lifelong sadhana it's not purity is not a pledge that you take once and finish it is an every day every moments affair brahmacharya is bit to bit second to second effort otherwise such a thing will happen so we were discussing contentment 
so we remain content when we are full we remain content when the desires are as less as possible when there is a turbulent ocean of desire in the heart it is very difficult to remain content lot of desires that's why baba says ichha matram avidya be even ignorant of the desires the world desires and how to get rid of this unending flow of desires they are like waves of the ocean they never stop one desire ends another desire starts that desire ends third desire starts unending flow of desires we don't have to control desires we have to transform them the moment you try to suppress any desire that suppression that repression leads to psychiatric illnesses there was a sister who used to come and the other sister was saying she keeps on eating every two hourly when in madhuban she feels hungry every two hourly why no reason but she wants something to eat we tried to penetrate the matter we found out that the place where she stays there are strict rules that you cannot eat if there are 10 sweets the 10 should remain every sweet is counted every tolly is counted so the soul has adjusted but then she loves eating but the desire is suppressed and when you come here you have no control by any other person so one develops excessive voracious eating whenever there is a suppression of anything it will lead to insanity or mental emotional imbalance so that's why people sigmund freud was the first person in the world who brought out this concept he said that all is happening because of suppression of sensual desires everything everything he is the first person to have worked on on this lust the maximum nobody in the history of the world ever worked on this so much as he did and he ultimately concluded that all the diseases in the world is because of suppression of this that's why don't suppress this and that's why this concept was easily accepted by the whole world and that concept led to the fall of the world because sigmund freud had no idea though he was so intelligent and though he had research subconscious mind the most but he was also as much influenced by it as those people who did not have any knowledge of subconscious mind so simply knowledge of subconscious mind doesn't help simply knowledge of lust doesn't help even though he himself writes ki how he was pestered by lust there is a woman standing he writes in his book and i felt i should go and just touch her and move away and he explained to his mind i should not do this i should not do this i should not do this but he went touched her and moved away so even though he had the knowledge of subconscious mind and he had the knowledge that because of suppression of this things are happening but he had no knowledge of sublimation of this desire he had no knowledge of how to transform lust into purity probably he never came in india and probably he never studied the deep indian psychology or philosophy where there were thousands of brahmacharis staying here and who lived their life in complete purity throughout probably he had no chance to meet adi shankaracharya he had no chance to meet some of the greatest tapasvis of india that's why he 
made his distorted conclusions and which was so easily accepted by the whole world ki you should not suppress this come on let's get drowned it till the neck and that's why but in some way he is right because he is the person who has worked on suppression of desires or repression of desires wherever there is a suppression of any desire the desire will try to come out like a tsunami one day that's why study your own subtle desires and you don't have to suppress them what you have to do is transform them what you have to do is think of it okay this is the desire my heart has developed a particular desire what is the result okay some enjoyment how much enjoyment temporary enjoyment what follows this enjoyment frustration what follows this enjoyment time waste what follows this enjoyment repentance now this is the circle of desires first once i have gone through this circle should i enter again this is the question so rather than suppressing it no 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 it's bad it is bad baba has said okay okay lust is a great enemy forget it it's not like that see what has happened see the cycle see the pathway of desire desire enjoyment definitely there is an enjoyment in sensual pleasure there is an enjoyment one feels happiness if there is no happiness in lust people would not have gone after it but how is the happiness transient temporary very transitory happiness and that happiness soon turns into frustration and that frustration again turns into addiction person cannot live without it then and that addiction leads to time waste that addiction leads to money waste that addiction leads to infidelity infidelity means to husband or wife they become infidel means unloyal to each other bewafa so that sense of infidelity arises that sense of mistrust arises and then there is a deep repentance and person is caught in this trap so study the desires this is what desires are should i continue to do that again what is the usefulness of this desire when you see things through and through you can get rid of it you cannot get rid of anything by just by suppression there was a group of sanyasins they were known as flagist they used to carry uh what is this known as a whip and they used to hit themselves with that whip they used to whip themselves till the time they get bloody the moment they would find that there is a sensual thought they would start whipping them themselves just as in muslim the shias do on muharram ya ali ya ali ya ali all that the things they do in the similar manner this group of sanyasins in america they were known as the flagist to the moment they see some women and there is a lust so they would take the whip and start hitting themselves so uh, that was a punishment but the result was entirely different after some time the more they whip themselves the more the sensual thoughts came so the entire thing got reversed they started whipping so as to punish themselves so that i will not do this again but the thing that happened was entirely reverse so suppression of desire never leads to anything you cannot just run away from person there is a a and b if a tries to run away from b it's not that a will get rid of b you can create supermarket in the mind while sitting in the himalayas it's not running away from the places it's by proper contemplation by deep thinking then only you can get rid of such understanding the uselessness the wastefulness of the desire 
understanding the worthlessness of the desire. So, even jnani souls are caught up in such labyrinth of desire, maze of desire, bhul bulaiya. One is lost in this labyrinth. Where to go, one doesn't understand. There are so many desires. So, contentment, santushtata, three things are necessary. First, you should be full, full of treasures, full of fortune, full of attainments. Then only you can remain santushta. Otherwise, you cannot. Second, desires, add less desires as possible. Worldly desires, mundane desires, what you want to, you should have are spiritual desires. Have the desire for intense effort making. Have the desire for attaining a very high post in golden age. Have the desire to become ideal in this Brahmin family. Have the desire for 100% purity. Have the desire to become very powerful. Have the desire to have inner mental resilience to face all the difficult adverse situations of life. If at all one wants to have desire, have the desire to love God above all. Have the desire to be combined with Him all the time. Have the desire to always stay in the angelic stage. Never to come down from that angelic stage. Have the desire not to touch the mud of body, but to swing in the swing of supernatural, super sensuous, super null happiness. So second thing which is needed for contentment is as less desire as possible. The third thing is create the sanskar of contentment. Contentment has more to do with sanskar. It has less to do with what you have. A person might be a very rich person and yet he remains discontented. Why? Because there is a sanskar of remaining unhappy. It has nothing to do with what you have. Even if you start getting everything in life, even if you have everything in life, but still if there is a sanskar of asantushtata, discontentment, one remains content, discontent. So you have to create the sanskar of contentment. And how to create sanskar of contentment? By how to create sanskar. Forget word sanskar, talk about habit. How to create any habit? By repeating. By repetition. How to create sanskar? By affirmations. How to create sanskar? By soman. How to create sanskar? By self uh, respect. I am a jewel of contentment. I have everything in life. I don't need anything of the world. Baba has given me everything. Keep on repeating. The chantless chant. Ajapa chap. This chantless chant of contentment. I am a contented soul. I don't need anything of this world. Everything of this, nothing of this world can ever satisfy me. Soul is infinite. Infinite cannot be satisfied by anything which is finite. Soul is infinite, anant. The thirst of the infinite cannot be satisfied by anything which is finite, anything which is mundane, anything which is in the world, anything which is worldly. No human being can ever satisfy me. No thing can ever satisfy me. No object can ever satisfy me. The only person, the only thing that can satisfy me is something which is infinite. And God is the ocean of infinity. He alone can satisfy me and nothing else. So, these are the three things necessary to become content. So, Baba says, if you are content, what happens? You are loved by God, you are loved by the world, and you are loved by yourself. At present, there is a lack of self-love. There is a self-hatred. Why? What is self-hatred? Hating oneself. Why? 
because we have committed some some sins and there is a guilt consciousness that's why we hate ourselves there is self victimization we feel we are responsible for all the bad things that are happening there is inferiority complex these are the three forms of self hatred there is a inferiority complex i feel i can never do anything i feel that others are doing so well others are speaking so well so others are having so good churning but i cannot speak i cannot churn i cannot write i don't have any abilities i don't have any specialities they are so good they write so good their speeches are so good they write books i can't write even one line what to do they have so many degrees and we don't have any degree they are being respected nobody even ask me <laughs> so there is inferiority complex within in next sunday's mutli tomorrow's baba said take a class you all create a class on everybody's great in this brahmin family so Hmm? last line before acha the last line of meeting with parties is that everybody is great in this brahmin family so these are the three things about contentment contentment means i am full then only i can remain content contentment means as less desires as possible worldly desires and contentment means it is the question of sanskar it has nothing to do with what i have and what i don't have i might be the person who doesn't have anything no worldly achievements but yet i am content and there is another side another person who is very rich who has everything but still there is a growing dissatisfaction in the heart so loved by god loved by people and loved by self om shanti